in the warm, shallow seas that will one day be the United Kingdom, many different marine reptiles have fully adapted to an aquatic lifestyle. Some, like the ichthyosaurs, have become streamlined and dolphin-like, using their broad tail flukes to swim rapidly, while plesiosaurs have become long and narrow, using their four flippers to fly beneath the waves. These two species can often be seen swimming in the same location, as they are both similar in size and feed on much of the same food. From fish to squid, these predators aren't fussy, and can often be seen darting just beneath the water's surface, trying to catch and consume as many as possible. But both species have to be wary, for there are even larger marine reptiles that call these waters home. Atombrosaurus is a 4.5 meter long hunter. Though they look similar to Plesiosaurus, they are actually early pliosaurs, whose necks will shrink down and whose heads will grow to massive sizes. Nowadays, they travel in mated pairs and are highly aggressive to other marine reptiles. Many other species simply leave an area once a duo of Atombrosaurus arrive, not wanting to be pierced by their long teeth. One pair glides side by side through the water, propelled by their four flippers, eyes watching out for any intruders to their territory, and for a potential meal. As the resident ichthyosaurs move away from them, the male and female Atombrosaurus spot a school of fish moving steadily over the coral reef. The pair slowly begins to part, the male fanning out to the right, while the female goes to the left, both seeming to give the school a wide berth. When they are both in line with each other, and the school of fish in between them, they slow right down, and tentatively swivel their bodies so they face the fish head on. Each movement slowed right down as not to alert their prey. In a near perfect unison, the duo propel themselves forward with all four flippers, instantly reaching high speed. The fish see the threat coming from both sides and scatter, but too late. Both Atombrosaurus reach their target at the same time, but the male goes underneath his partner, while she goes over him. They pass each other with mouths wide open before snapping them shut, each snaring two fish in their mouths, with no way to escape thanks to the predator's many needle-like teeth. The pair swallows their catches and regroups. They gracefully spin around each other in a brief underwater dance, before parting ways again, ready for another attack. Once again they align themselves on opposite sides of the school of fish, and when they are both ready, they accelerate forward, but this time, they turn sideways. So they pass each other with their bellies facing one another. The fish are too slow to respond, and the Atombrosaurus take another fish each, the remaining fish retreat into the coral of the reef, where the large reptiles cannot reach them, or use their dual ambush attack. The pair has fed well, and swim towards each other, the male performing a full body spin in the water, getting an audible chirp of approval from the female. This plane helps to strengthen the bond between mated pairs, and it is only through years of hunting together that this couple can coordinate so effectively together. Few marine reptiles forge such connections, and it is one of the many things that make these Jurassic Seas a deadly, but beautiful spectacle. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a rather deceiving looking marine reptile, Atombrosaurus. Atombrosaurus's first remains were discovered in England in 1880 and were originally thought to belong to Plesiosaurus. These fossils would later be destroyed in World War II, but fortunately casts of the fossils had been made and survived the war, being kept to this day in London's Natural History Museum. It wasn't until 1993 that the casts were re-examined and it was discovered that these remains belonged to a new species. They, along with some other remains, were renamed by Robert T. Baker to Atombrosaurus, after famous naturalists, the man, the myth, the legend, David Attenborough. Attenborosaurus lived between 196 and 189 million years ago in the early Jurassic. It grew to 4.5 meters long and weighed between 500 and 900 kilograms. It belonged to the Plesiosaura order, but despite looking very similar to its relatives, including Plesiosaurus itself, Attenborosaurus is actually a pliosaur. You see, within Plesiosauria, you have the Plesiosaurs, which are known for their long necks and small heads, and then there are the Pliosaurs, 
which usually have short necks and large heads. In reality, it isn't as clear cut as that, however. Attenbrosaurus is a very early diverging pliosaur, whose neck is beginning to shorten and whose head is starting to grow out. Just another example in paleontology of how appearances can be deceiving and that there are always exceptions to the rules. Its more robust head still has long, thin teeth that lined its deep jaws, perfect for snagging and holding onto slippery prey like fish and squid. There were over 20 vertebrae in the neck, so it likely still had the flexibility of its plesiosaur relatives. Its body was flat and streamlined, making it easier to move through the water. To do so, its limbs had evolved into flippers. The hind limbs were slightly larger than the forelimbs, and all four could be used together to accelerate quickly, or they could each be moved independently to steer itself or perform fast turns when hunting or evading predators. Unlike in whales that simply extend the length of their fingers, plesiosaur's digits increase the amount of individual bones in the hand, spreading the tiny bones out along the flipper, making it sturdy yet flexible and maneuverable. Recent discoveries have found a plesiosaur fossil with impressions that show it had a tail fluke. While we don't have the same evidence for Atombrosaurus, it is likely that it and other plesiosaurs and pliosaurs had them as well, possibly being used as a rudder. The holotype fossil had also preserved skin impressions of Atombrosaurus, though unfortunately they too were destroyed in World War II. From the notes taken before its destruction, the skin was described as being membranous, devoid of any significant large scales. As a marine reptile, having smoothed, barely visible scales would have made the animal more streamlined and much better for swimming through the ocean when compared to, for example, the rough and heavy armour of crocodilians. The closest to the locomotion made by Plesiosauria that we have today would be sea turtles, but they only use their front flippers most of the time. Perhaps a better analogy may be fur seals. However, the use of four flipper locomotion was lost from the planet after Plesiosauria went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous. Some of the species that lived alongside include Plesiosaurus, Ichthyosaurus, Archanentrus, and Dimorphodon. Atombrosaurus was one of the earliest of its family, and though it's hard to tell it was a pliosaur, it clearly was starting on a body plan that lasted the majority of the Mesozoic. But what do you think of Atombrosaurus? And for my question of the week, what do you think was more successful, the long neck plesiosaurs or the huge jawed pliosaurs? Let me know what lesser known extinct creature you'd like me to do a breakdown on next, and until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.